Gentlemen, here we go again. Cards coming back at you. Now we're into the 2024 season with our Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2023. Trying to rebuild these Louisville Cardinals. Uh, just as a review, as we as we get the notifications out, as people trickle into the stream, uh, as you join in, let's take a look at the history, see what we've done over the past few years. A little quick recap. First year, 15 and 16, not great. Last year. 27 and 9, ranked number 10, made it to the Sweet 16. So, uh, pretty nice jump there in that year. And I don't think we lost a lot. We brought in a couple of pieces. Uh, as we've done the last few streams, we went ahead, got through the transfers and the early season recruiting. And, you know, we, we got a couple dogs here. We got Martin Oliver, a power forward. He's going to fit in very nicely. He was top 10 at Memphis, he was decent at Indy. We've also got Derek Fall. Uh, we're, we really were a little bit heavy on shooting guards. I would have rather had a small forward in this spot, I think. But uh, this is talent. Top 25 at Indy uh, and top 10 at Memphis. So this is getting closer and closer to the type of guys that I want to be bringing in. And just while we take a quick jump over here, still at 57 prestige. So hopefully this year we jump up into those 60s. And, you know, we're, we're two or three years away from really – uh, putting it on cruise control and just rolling. Beach Bear, what up, buddy? Glad to have you in chat. Real good to see some familiar names popping up in here. So we try to get the uh, the 2023 version of the game. Try to get a nice long save running on it. We're here in 2024, which will be our third season. So recruiting-wise, we are done. Just those two players. Uh, I think they'll both fit in very nicely. Uh, you can see we are out of scholarships. And so at this point... We want to get our get our depth chart set up, and then we're going to roll through this season. You know I don't tinker too much through the season. Uh, could be to my detriment. I know a lot of people like to tinker. I don't. I try to run through these things, especially on stream. I'll do it more off stream. But uh, So let's jump over and see how this roster breaks down. It's been, what, a week, week and a half since we've done this, so i got to reorient myself just a little bit. So, I mean, it very obviously seems like Bootsy, the freshman, is going to be stepping into this point guard slot. I think last year we might have run two shooting guards, uh, but I think Bootsy is uh, a capable uh, fill-in here. He's got some good potential. The passing and handling are good. The defense is good enough. The scoring is good enough. He's not going to do anything crazy, but he can make it work. Now, let's see. Would either of these shooting guards be better? Darius doesn't quite have the handle or the scoring or the jumper. A little bit better defensively, better steals, way more athletic. So that's a possibility, just something we could take into consideration. Kincaid is about as good scoring. He's not. He wouldn't be a primary ball, ball handler type of player, though. And he's also got the defense. So we could certainly look at doing that, maybe moving Randall back to the point, letting Bootsy come off as like the third guard and letting Kincaid run that two spot for us. Uh, Isaac Green, obviously, is our small forward. We're rolling with him. Uh, Ed Branch, uh, ooh, I don't know, is it that obvious? The scoring, he's there. The star-wise, he's there. I'd say once we look overall, he's he's going to be the guy, Isaac, here. A little bit better inside, a little bit better jumper, a uh, little bit better scoring, certainly a better passer. Defensively, not quite where Branch is, but then you look at the blocks. Uh, I don't know, Branch is, he he's, makes it closer than it looks, uh, but we are going to roll with green, I do believe. And then let's take a look at what we want to do on the inside. So I know, you know, we we mixed and matched a little bit on the inside last year as well. Uh, I believe it was Bowman that had the really long injury. So scoring wise, see Cunningham's just not there scoring wise. Bowman and Hughes are both there scoring wise. They can both do it defensively. Cunningham d doesn't have either of those to be quite honest. In fact, Tremaine, 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 whatever. However that one, uh, however that one pops out. Jenkins might be the better option as a rotational big just because of the scoring. I mean, look, where's Cunningham beating him? A little bit on the inside, not the jumper, not the free throws, certainly not the scoring. No, a little bit better handle. I don't know how important that is out of a power forward. Uh, rebounding, they're even. Jenkins is the better defender. So what are we getting? More athleticism and more handling out of Cunningham? If anything, he should be considered as a rotational small forward. So... Uh, definitely good that we're bringing in Oliver to fill in a spot there at the power forward position. 
Uh, I think we I think we do like last year. Roll with Bowman at the four, Hughes at the five, until the game forces us to do something differently. So let's get this depth chart set up. We are going to start it off with, uh, let's see, I always like to see what the computer suggests to begin with. So they like Kendrick, Randall, Green, Cunningham, and Bowman. I hate that. So if anything, I would roll Randall up here. And I thought Kincaid was the other shooting guard that we liked. Let's go to Slick Rick. Been following it on YouTube. Yeah, jump into the stream, buddy. The more the merrier when we get into the when we get into the stream for sure. Alright, so they're trying to run. Wait, what are they trying to run? They want to run Abdul Kendrick. Let's take a look, make sure we didn't overlook anything. But yeah, always glad to have the YouTubers pop in, uh, catch something live. So, no on the jumper. Scoring's close. A little bit of passing. Not bad. No, not defensively. No, so Kendrick's not a starter at all. Uh, you know, let's see. How heavy are we going into our sets here? Because for a point guard, you know, Bootsy's not going to have it right off. Randall's got it, for sure. So, yeah, let's run with that. Let's run Randall at the point. We'll let Kincaid run the two. Bootsy can be the rotational guy. Kendrick is very much not... Uh, I don't want him in this uh, rotation to begin with. Branch, I do. Jenkins, I do. Bootsy, I do. So, let's see what the computer likes for a matrix on this setup. So, it does like Cunningham running more of the 3-4, not so much the big man position. Then it doesn't have Branch in there at all. Actually, I like Branch better than Cunningham. So let's order these guys correctly. All right, so yeah, this is significantly closer to what I want to do. And let's just spread these minutes out a little bit. Make sure we're getting everybody the rest they need. And we're running... Bootsy all over this. Uh, yeah, you know what? What we'll do is point guard here and here. Uh, point guard here and here. Okay. And then for the shooting guard... We'll let the actually true shooting guards handle that responsibility. All right, so we got a nice tight eight-man rotation. We do have Cunningham, well, a couple of Cunninghams down here, and a Kendrick. Let's let's swap that around. All right, so let's see if if this kind of uh, this kind of minute rotation gets us where we want to get. You know, we've we've got our strategy where I want it. We've got. Uh, a lot of these guys have got some experience in the system now, so we should be able to keep that 75% strategy, 75% uh, set play uh, in place. I like to have that. I really think that it helps on the road. And let's get this season going. You know, the recruiting's over with. We've spent all of our scholarships. We've got talent coming in. We've got talent that's already here. Uh, I love Bootsy Mance going forward at the point. I love our shooting guard recruit. Uh, we've got to find a new small forward. I uh, love we'll our power forward recruit, and we've already got depth at the center position. So, really, next year is just going to be about finding uh, where is Isaac Green's replacement. And at this point, I very much hope that we have a similar season to last year. I think that we can do another, you know, borderline top 10, borderline maybe on a sweet 16 run type of thing. Uh, it'll just depend on how this guard rotation plays out, really. Once we get past those first three, I really don't have a whole lot of faith in Kincaid. Uh, at least not yet. He might have some. He might have some potential. Maybe down the line, he could be all right. Maybe he can be a rotational type guy next year. You know, if we have you know some some guys declare early or some guys that want to transfer, which is more likely at this point. I don't know if we have anybody that even might consider declaring early. Certainly, nobody I've recruited. I guess Green would be the only one. I think he's a junior this year. So let's get into these games, see how this goes, and then hopefully, once again, I'll get you through the offseason and see what the transfers look like next year, maybe see what the early season recruiting looks like next year. And, uh, yeah, year three. Get this rebuild. Let's get it moving. we got to get to a Final Four. we got to hang some banners. 
get Louisville back to their ways, get the prestige back up into the 80s, all that good stuff. Uh, we're not we're not sitting down in 48 or whatever we started this off at with the new mod. And the new base game, our prestige, Louisville's prestige is just awful. Uh, and deservedly so, but we're going to fix it here. I don't know if Kenny Payne's the man in real life. I can tell you, on this game, I got him. <laughs> Bree says, I got to recruit the next Wes Unseld. It's going to be a challenge the game wants to give me. Okay, I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, another Wes Unseld running around down, down in the Yum Center. I would take care of that real quick. Now, that's interesting. Do we want a red shirt? Um, that guard I didn't, that shooting guard that I pulled out of our lineup. I don't think so. You know, we're bringing in another really good two guard, and you know we do have some depth there. Although both these guys were playing our upperclassmen, but um, you know I, I think as our prestige continues to climb, we're going to keep on recruiting over and recruiting over these guys. So I'm definitely not going to concern myself with red shirting. Uh, now, if you're at a smaller school or if you're at a school where you don't. You know, it's going to be a while before you can get your prestige up. You know, it totally makes sense to to work those red shirts, get those guys into your system. Uh, you got to be smart about it so that you don't for, run these guys off, force them to transfer out. But um, you know, it's not something I want to consider in in this situation just because we're going to recruit over them so quickly. And even if we do find a gym, we either get them on the court or they transfer out. So. All right, let's see. We're going to be playing IU on the – no, at home. At home against the Hoosiers. All right, so uh, two of the more historically successful programs in the entire country, the Hoosiers and the Louisville Cardinals. Bubba says he's had a lot of luck redshirting in 23. So what are you looking to typically redshirt? Uh, I mean, are you redshirting – High-level high recruits that just come in with lower current ability? Are you, are you red-shirting you know, some of those diamonds in the rough? Or just guys that don't really find a place in your roster, red-shirt them and hope they develop? What are you typically doing? Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's get it. Let's see if we can get it start off right. Indiana and Louisville in the Yum Center. Yes, 15-point win. Hughes, Green, and Bowman. So the bigs dominated. Not much out of the guards early on, but we'll take that. That's a nice uh, nice little start there. 15-point victory over you know, a Power 5 team, a team that traditionally is, is better than they currently are. So hopefully, hopefully we just keep that success rolling. Take last season, roll it right into this season. Do, if we did the exact same thing, top 10 finish, sweet 16 finish, I would take that and just keep moving right on into the next season and snowballing that prestige into bigger and bigger recruits. On the road against Santa Clara. Now, you can't take much uh you can't take much out of these net seasons one game into it. But <laughs> we're 15 and they're 350 something or 315. Like they're down around where real life Louisville was this year, and I can tell you from experience that is a bad, bad place to be. So let's see if we can take our little show on the road and hold off Santa Clara by 17. Adam Hughes, Frazier Bowman, Isaac Green. Back-to-back -back games, we just took it inside, we beat them on the head from the inside, and we get out of there safely. Moving on. Pushing through November of 2024. Have a game at Colorado State. The Rams coming up and then Grambling. What is Grambling? The Ramblers? Oh, and then we get Indiana State. Larry Bird U. Sycamores. All right, so three more games if we want to try to get through November undefeated. See if we can make it happen. I don't feel any burning desire to uh, check out the emails. They're generally just going to be scouting reports. If there's a team incident, nine times out of ten, it's going to pop up with a red warning box and let me know. So unless I miss it, if y'all see me miss one, call it out in chat. Uh, I'm not going to look too much at the scouting reports. You know I never do. You know, my, uh, my philosophy in real life and on this game is do what you do and do it well and make the opponent react to you. So that's what we're doing. We're not trying to adapt our game to other people. They can come out and play the way we want to play. And if we're good at doing what we do, we'll win. 
And uh, if they beat us at our game, so be it. We should be better. Louisville at Colorado State. Now, they actually got a decent net. They're undefeated on the year. Who knows who they played? It was only one time. Uh, but, you know, this is a team, Colorado State. Uh, they can be good, especially in football every now and then. They'll pop up with a 7-8 win season, make make some kind of bowl game. So I'm sure, you know, they could probably pull that off basketball-wise. But these are the kind of games we need to be winning, and we don't. We fail. It was still Bowman, Green, and uh, now Randall, and Hughes suffers an injury. All right, so early on in the season, a little bit of controversy. Let's see what this injury is. Hopefully it's not too bad, but I believe uh, – I don't remember which – oh, sore wrist, 91%, six days. That barely even necessitates a email. I would like to see how exactly this went wrong. I understand it was on the road early in the year. Still a close game. I always like to look at fouls and minutes. Hughes didn't play a ton, so Hughes got hurt fairly early, it looks like. 20 minutes is all he got. Bootsy Mance was completely ineffective when he was in the game. That's completely unsurprising for a freshman point guard when we're running as heavy into our sets as we are. We're running 75 and the 75% of the time down the court, we're running sets. And his set knowledge right now is like 10, right? It might have got a little better. Okay, he's up to 30 on each. Still not great. Still not where we want it to be like Randall, 83 and 80. That's where we want him to be. So when Mance has to come out, especially on a road game, a freshman on the road this early in the season, it's not a surprise they beat up on him pretty good. So I'm not going to worry about that at all. Pushing on past that. We'll recover. Not worried about it. Although it is going to make it difficult to stay in the top 25, I think. <laughs> I don't imagine that... Uh, I don't imagine that that loss to the Rams, well, even though it was on the road, is going to really impress any of the voters. All right, so we got Grambling. Uh, we're back in our safe space, back in Louisville, back in the Yum Center. The Tigers, why did I think they were? Who are the Ramblers? There is a Ramblers college team. I just can't think of who it is. It's clearly not grambling. They are the Tigers. And let's see if we can dismiss them as they come into the Yum Center and try to make us uh, try to put a little losing streak on us. We're having none of it. 18 point win. Hughes, even with the wrist, plays well. Isaac Green, and once again, Frazier Bowman. So you can clearly see who the stars of this team are. Those shooting guards, yeah, they should be giving us a little bit more. But that's all right. We're taking advantage where we have an advantage. So the the motion and the triangle, both those are designed to just be traditional sets and, you know, take advantage where you got it. Put big men near the basket, put perimeter guys on the perimeter, and see what happens. Whatever comes naturally. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got Kentucky looming. We got a date against the Sycamores to get us out of November. Then we get one last warm-up game against Stonehill, who I've legit never heard of in my life. And then we go on the road to Rupp and play the Wildcats. All right, so as long as Larry Legend isn't stepping out on the court tonight, I think we can handle Indiana State at home. I have been wrong in the past. Who close in between Citadel and Louisiana Lafayette there. All right, the Sycamores come in. Sycamores go away. 21 points. Once again, Hughes, 28 and 16, crushing them. I would, it's safe to say he's over that sore wrist. Pretty sure it's been more than six days, and that performance certainly tells me uh, sore wrist or not, he's out there balling. So Adam Hughes taking care of business, putting the Cardinals on his back, right on past the Indiana State Sycamores. So now we're on – Stonehill is one of the new teams this year. Yeah, that would make sense because I've never heard of them in my entire life. So I know it seems like the past couple of years there's been a handful of new teams each year in Division One. So Bubba says Stonehill is one of those. I 100% accept that as fact and truth. And if I'm wrong, then blame Bubba. 
but no, I've never heard of them. So it makes sense that they're new. And they're one and three. So this would be their third year in D1, but it uh, looks like they haven't quite caught on yet. I would imagine their prestige is pretty god-awful. Dog's going nuts upstairs, if you can hear that. I can hear it pretty well, and I think this mic picks up pretty well. So, so Kentucky looking good, 5-1. and one. We got to go on the road. That'll be a tough one. You know, hopefully they haven't had a great schedule. Hopefully there's a little bit of fluff in there. There certainly is in ours as well. But we do have a win over IU, so. The only loss being against, of course, Colorado State on the road. Oh, Kentucky jumping up to number 13. But, yeah, we lost to Colorado State on the road, playing, I think, 20 minutes out of our freshman guard. Who's learning? Who's developing? He's not quite ready to be the man yet, though. The more time we get him early in the season, the more ready he'll be for tournament time, the more effective of uh, relief he'll be. And, of course, we'll be on neutral courts once we get to the tournament. So, but Yeah, freshman on the road, especially when you're not talking about like the top 25 type of freshman, freshmen on the road are difficult. All right, Stonehill was no match. Bowman, Hughes, and that time Brian Kincaid. All right, so a little bit of uh, assistance from our guards, finally. Brian Kincaid comes through with 18 points. But, you know, the usual suspects are carrying us. So what are we, six, seven games into it now? Sometimes I just like to take a quick look at the dashboard and see, like, where is our production coming from? And look at that. <laughs> That's Adam Hughes with 24.55. So productivity-wise, he's carrying the team by about he's he's doing 25% of what the team is doing as a whole. Look at the man, 16 points, almost averaging that double double. And Bowman's not far off. He's about a rebound behind, about four points behind as well. Um, but yeah, you can see these guys. Uh, there's a reason they're both starting, right? And you can see Jenkins certainly outperforming Cunningham. I'm sure Jenkins is getting more minutes. You know, Cunningham's not getting much minutes-wise. Ed Branch, five points a game. I like it. Isaac Green with 11, two and, 11, 3, and 5, actually. Kincaid's averaging 12 a game. Randall, not much points-wise, but he's almost on five assists. And Bootsy's playing all right. He's coming along. He's developing. So we'll see how that, we'll see how that progresses. See if we can get a text off and get the dog to hush. All right, big matchup Kentucky Wildcats on the road at Rupp. Cardinals coming in with some some mean guys on the inside. Nice experience, small forward. Pretty talented. And actually, I mean, some upperclassmen guards as well. No natural point guard. Got to go to the got to go to the bench for Bootsy for that natural point guard. But you know, I think Randall he's been doing well. All right, two more days. We're on December eleventh. The 13th, it's the Cardinals and the Wildcats. It's time to start getting excited. Ooh, get a little riled up. Maybe we can pull one of those uh, sneak attacks like we did in year one. Ooh, knock them right off their little perch. We're 22, they're 11 in the net, so both we're both up there. You know, It looks like they're no joke. This will probably be a really tough one. But anything can happen in a big rivalry game, as we've seen many times before on this stream and plenty of other places. See if we can take these losers out. Come on, guys. Get pumped. Get it up for the cards. Come on. Oh, we fell out of the rankings as well. 
No, that's that's disappointing. That's a bad sign, I think. They're number eight. We're out of the rankings. Yeah, they got a spot 14. Gregory Chapman with a huge game. Bowman, Kincaid, Green. Adam Hughes did not show up. And we ate it on the road there. Let's see. And look at this. We're going to have another you know, 24 minutes out of Hughes. Not fantastic. He was actually minus 15. Randall, 0 for 9, 0 for 6 from 3, minus 21. That dude got shut down. So he did. He threw big time there. Close in the first half, got run off the court in the second half. Uh, maybe we would have been better off with Bootsy Mance there uh, replacing Randall, who had. What's the opposite of the game of your life? He had the opposite of the game of his life. That was putrid. All right, so we'll keep that in mind as we move forward. See if uh, see if uh, Bootsy's developed enough that he's ready to step in. Uh, I'm gonna assume Kentucky. You know, they probably just flat out had better guards and guys that were playing in their natural positions. But it's disappointing, but it's still early in the season. That's why we get those games out of the way early in the year. That's why I like to run it through about the end of January and then sort of reevaluate our roster, especially if we've got some promising-looking freshmen. You know, if, if the starting spots are clear, if everything is set in stone at the beginning, that's fine. But, you know, this year it wasn't. We're, we're playing two centers. We're playing two shooting guards all in our starting lineup, and there's room for adjustment. So we'll take a look at it when we get a little bit further in, once we get a little bit into conference play, a little bit more consistent competition, we see what kind of results we're having. And we can always change course if along the way we realize what we're doing isn't working. Still 5-2. and two, I still expect to – I still have the exact same expectations I did when the, when the year started. Try to make a push for that top 10. Try to make a push for the Sweet 16. I haven't seen anything that says we can't do it. So now we got Murray State, and you can see our nets hanging around where we need it to be. Right around where it was for most of last season as well, I believe. So we're doing fine there. All right, let's get back on track. Take care of Murray State. A couple in-state games. Murray State and Moorhead State, both in Kentucky. All right, 24 points there. Hughes bounces back with a big game. Uh, you know, that's the usual suspects there. That big three for the Louisville Cardinals this year. Bowman, Hughes, and Green. All right, let's, so that was that's actually three in-state games in a row. So we went UK, uh, Murray, and then Moorhead. So three games against in-state competition in a row here uh, in the middle of December for the Cards as we run up to our the beginning of conference play, which will be the day after Christmas. All right, 6-2 and two versus 6-4. and four. The Eagles, the Cardinals, from the Yum Center in downtown Louisville. Last out-of-conference game of the year. Oh, putting it on them. Bowman, Hughes, and Randall had a game there, so 102 to 79. Nice little 23-point win there. Oh, and this is this is actually neutral court. This is not from the Yum. This is neutral court tournament games. So depending on how many games are in this tournament, we could play four games in a row. That game on the 23rd, this one on the 24th, if we win a championship game on Christmas Day, and then Florida State on the 26th before having a one-day break and getting Clemson. We're going to have some tired legs in Louisville. Well, actually, not in Louisville, in wherever city this tournament is. So, Oh, Gonzaga got upset by American University, 76-59. to Tough little road game there for the Zags. All right, let's see if we can take care of the Billikens. Yes, sir, 14 points. Kincaid, Hughes, and Randall. So finally, the guards getting a little action in here as the big men, that uh, that big three for Louisville. Hughes, the only one that really showed up against the Billikens, but they still notched the victory. And now our reward is, what, 
four games. Wait, two, three, four, five games in six days. Five games in six days. Isn't that lovely? Ooh, Auburn taking care of business against the Tigers of Memphis. Let's had a little penny on the sideline for that one. You got to get big penny out there. All right, Louisville and the alma mater of one Dickie Vitell. Put it on him. Hughes, Randall, Bowman. Hughes had himself a game as well. Or as Hughes had himself another big game is what I meant to say. Absolutely crushed it with 20-plus points. Uh, and that's what you expect from a guy where you look at the player – impact estimate and he's up around 25 percent like you just expect him to be the dude and the nice thing is he's a sophomore uh i don't believe he was even near the top 25 uh, as far as recruit rankings so he shouldn't be a danger to go pro early could be a danger to transfer i suppose uh, but we're playing him at his natural position so hopefully that helps First game in conference. We're up to 11 in the net ranking, so that's exactly the type of trajectory that I want to be on. Tigers 8-1, Duke 8-1. So nobody who's ranked in the ACC right now won today. Let's see if we can get on the right track in conference against the Seminoles. No, at home we drop it by five. Hughes played. Hughes had himself a double-double, but we still lost 79-74 to against the Seminoles. Now, when we start losing conference games at home, that's when I start thinking, okay, do we need to reevaluate? Now, they had a decent record. They were a decent team. We're going to go on the road here against Clemson. This one, like I would expect to lose this one before the last one, although their net's worse. So we'll see what happens. Maybe a little bit of the early season uh, ranking funkiness just throwing us off as far as expectations go. But, again, this is on the road, so – with the team that we've got, we can easily lose road games against quality opponents. And Clemson, regardless of what their net is, uh, they're sitting here at 10-2, and two, number 13 in the country. They're certainly quality. It would be nice to pick up a win here, but this is probably back-to-back -back losses to start off the ACC. And then it looks like things are going to get a bit easier. Yeah. A little 13-point loss. Really, nobody got going. You see Tremaine Jenkins jumping up there into one of the top performers. So... You know, we're, we uh, we ended up the year uh, on a downward, well down down slope, nine and four, zero and two to start off conference play. I fully expect to turn that around, but we will take a look. Depending on how we're doing, either the middle of January if we're doing poorly, or a little bit further toward the end of January if we're doing, uh, you know, if we're performing up to expectations, uh, we'll take a look, evaluate some performances, and see if we need to make any changes to our rotation. All right, so 2024 comes to a close. We're sitting 9-4 and four overall, 0-2 in conference. And we're about to feast on NC State at home. Then we got to go on the road against Syracuse. that will be one of those games that tells us where we're at. Syracuse on the road. You know, they look like a pretty average team. That's a game we should win. And then Miami at home, depending on how good they are. You know, we should have maybe, I don't know, Florida State. We probably should have beat them at home. But I can understand them winning. You know, that's one more like a toss-up game. You know, we should expect to lose on the road. We should expect to win that game at home, but can you flip it? Sure. And I figure Miami will be similar. NC State, this should be a win. If we lose here, that's a red flag for certain. Let's see what we get, though. I mean, four and seven. They got to be – you're not playing teams that are all that good in the out-of-conference, right? So hopefully they're losing some – garbage teams and uh, they're not going to give us too much of a scare here let us get our bearings get a little confidence get a little bit of experience for some of these younger guys still only running one senior out there right now and he's arguably the uh, least impactful out of all of the starters Louisville NC State Woo! closer than it should have been Hughes didn't get off the way he should have. Bowman had himself a game. Randall chipped in with 12, but that was really too close for comfort. So 
Uh, we're not going to call it a red flag, but we're certainly going to call it another yellow flag. And we've seen far too many yellow flags this season. Colorado State, Florida State, uh, that was at least our third, if not fourth, uh, sign that there could be some trouble. But we're holding the faith. We got three 50-50 games right here in a row. If we win two of them, we're fine. Uh, if we lose two or more, I mean, we could lose all three of them easily. Um, but if we lose two or more out of this little run, it's definitely time to take a look and see what we're doing. Louisville at Syracuse. Hopefully the net tells the story here. And if it doesn't, yikes. All right, deep breath, everybody. <laughs> Woo, deep breath. Went on the road, got a conference win at Syracuse in the Carrier Dome. Never a safe place, never an easy place to win, even in a bad year. We took care of business there. All right, so now we got a couple of games against some top 25 type teams. Only six losses combined between Miami and the Fighting Agalias. Uh, hopefully we can go 500 in between these two games. And then, in my estimation, we're right on track for about where I thought we would be. Right about where we ought to be. Whew. I was definitely a little bit rattled before that go before that one went off though. That was uh nerve rattling. Nerve rattling. Get a little Florida A and M back in here. Alright, the game against Miami's tomorrow. Wednesday the eleventh. A win here would be big. Twelve and three Hurricanes, eleven and four Cardinals. Take a quick look at the net, and really, this is just telling us sort of giving us an idea of strength of schedule, quality of wins, all that good stuff mixed in there. Y'all know what net is. If you're on this stream, you know what net is, uh, and they're a pretty good one. Although we're a little bit ahead, and we're at home. So to me, this is one of those you know, 55-45s. We should win this. Uh, no guarantees. About the same chance of beating Florida State, and we lost. I mean, it's a little bit better than a coin flip. We're favored, but still virtually a coin flip. Uh, but we need to win some of these coin flips, and we didn't get it done. They got us 88-83. to Hughes had himself a game. Bowling played well. Couldn't get any help. I don't know where Green was. All right, one and one. I said we needed to go two and one to feel good. Right now we're one and one. We got the one we should have. We lost the coin flip, and now we're probably looking. Yeah, net wise, this is another coin flip, and it's another one that we should be slightly favored. So the third time that we've had one of these coin flip type games, and we've lost the first two. Hopefully some of Agalia's bad mojo or whatever just, like, drops them down. What's up, man? Stopping by to say, hey, you got 10 minutes, you're going to catch it on YouTube. Yeah, the whole thing will be up on YouTube. I appreciate you stopping by. You know, keeping the chat lively, seeing what's going on in real time as we... Uh, this is really a, a bit of a pivotal game on the season. We got to win some of these. We're getting these opportunities at home against teams that we're about as good as, or at least we think we're about as good as. So, we've got to take care of one of these. Time to get it done. Boom! Got it done in a big way. 17-point blowout. Suck it, Agalia. <laughs> that one's for you, buddy. Uh, you know, that, that's your bad juju cast all over these Notre Dame losers. Uh, so, we do take care of business. We go 2-1 and one in that pivotal stretch. Uh, and we're still feeling good. And we're going to have a... a Another interesting little stretch here because we're going to play a couple of average teams on the road and a decent-looking Duke team at home. So another three-game stretch and another three-game stretch that I want to look for a 2-1 and one record in order to continue continue our progress, continue our, our, our march toward the top of the rankings, not mediocrity. We're not dealing with mediocrity. I understand this year... You know, we're going to be one of those teams that's ranked 10 to 25. We might only be Sweet 16. But we keep marching in the right direction. And if we want to do that, we need two wins out of these three. 
at the Hokies, at Boston College, neither one of those are great. Home against a number 17 Duke. They, now, they are 11-6. and six. Hey, what's up, buddy? Little raid. Love the raid. <laughs> no, <laughs> Bubba. <laughs> I appreciate the raid, Joshua. Bubba said Notre Dame must have thought I was a 16 seed. That is accurate. Notre Dame does not traditionally play well against the 16 seed, at least in the Draft Day Sports universe, in the CBGM universe. And Agalia will attest to that. You know, he doesn't like playing 16 seeds. That they they bring a lot of problems for him. So, yeah, fantastic comment. Uh, I don't know how. Wait, if I can follow the guys that comment on my stream, I would follow you right now. That was perfect. Mm-hmm. All right, see if we can get this three-game stretch started off right. You can see net-wise why I'm optimistic. Uh, the record in the ACC might look similar. Out of conference does not. Net does not. Again, we're on the road. But we're taking care of business. Bowman, Hughes, and Kincaid. And you can see these are guys that have been around. These are guys where playing that high, uh, highly disciplined offensive set-wise. Uh, I really think those are the types of games where it makes a big difference. I really do. Now, maybe that's just my bias. I don't know. And, you know, you can have, if you've got like two or three of these like one and done type freshmen, you can just roll the ball out there and let them go at it. But if you've only got like one or maybe even two, like they're too prone. Even the good ones are prone to some duds here and there. So you got to cover yourself either through just pure numbers and talent or through you know, running some sets that these guys know one way or the other, at least in my experience. All right, another coin toss. We're one for two in coin tosses so far this year. Toss it up again, baby. Bam! Suck it, Duke. Losers. 88 to 64. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. All right, so we've already, we've already dominated that three-game stretch. We're good. Five and three in conference. Uh, very healthy overall record. In the back end of the top 25, I expect that to climb as long as we don't have any drastic losses. Ooh, F1 fan. All right, I like it. <laughs> Joshua is a Lewis Hamilton fan. Okay. I think I understand. Uh, I think I, I get what you're putting down there. It was a bit of a complex code to crack at first, but I think I'm with you. I mean, we could still use this game at Boston College. Just because I said we needed to go two for three doesn't mean I wouldn't like to go three for three. Because you can see what we got coming up. A couple of ranked teams. Looks like some road games in here at Miami. Virginia at home. Um, yeah, Boston College around 120 net. We certainly could lose it, but it'll piss me off if we do. So, fingers crossed. This is why we put the upperclassmen out there. This is why we're running sets. Let's go, guys. You know the offense. You know the defense. Defense, defense travels, baby. Play some D. Don't let these dudes upset you. That would be a pain. That's, oh, my gosh. So close, but we pulled it out. Woo! You sometimes you gotta win ugly. You can't always you can't always do it the way you want to do it. Sometimes you gotta win ugly. That was an ugly win. But when you're looking at it at the end of the year, it's only going in one column, right? It's either a W or an L, and that one goes in the W's. So very much appreciated. All right, let's see if we can take care of Miami on the road. They got us at home. Let's see if we can start you know, clawing some of these back. Some of these toss-ups that we lost. That we owe them. 
hurricanes coming in, stealing wins in the Yum Center. Pisses me off. But you can see they're a quality team. It's hard to beat quality team, but we're a quality team. So they beat us at home. Let's return that favor, boys. Adam Hughes, where are you at? Ah, no. Uh, he went 12-10. and 10. Uh, Usual suspects right there. 13-point loss on the road. Couldn't get it done. So you can see we're just not quite there. We're close. We're on the precipice. We're not quite there. And now we got number nine Virginia at home and then two games on the road against ranked teams. ACC still brutal this year. Still brutal. That's why so many of these games that you can win, like, you kind of have to win. Because there's going to be a lot of games. You just don't really have a great shot. Oh, do we want to change things up going to, yeah, let's let's go ahead and take a look. Take another look at the dashboard. See what these player impact estimates look like. So Hughes has come back to earth slightly, only because Bowman's taking up that slack. Really green. Uh, okay, Randall's producing the least on the court. But Kincaid's even beating out green. Isaac Green uh, being a huge disappointment this year. I mean, he's 11, 3, and 4, and a half. So maybe a huge disappointment is unfair to him. Maybe it's just these inside dudes are crushing it. Do we have an inside focus up? No, we're balanced on our focus. All right, now Bootsy's up to 40s. Randall's nearly 90s, though. Kincaid's. 80s, 85s. Green's way up there. Uh, Bowman and Hughes are solid. Well, Hughes isn't that high up, though. I mean, 50 and 60 compared to 40 and 40. And Hughes isn't drastically ahead of where Bootsy Mance is. Uh, let's take a look at some stats. Alright, so minutes per game. Bootsy's getting about 16. Our other two guards are getting right at about 30. Bootsy's field goal percentage is better. Three-point percentage is significantly better. So he's getting three assists. All right, that's solid. Two turnovers hurts. All right, look at the Nets. Look at the PER. You really kind of wonder if, uh, if Randall playing out of position just isn't working for him. All right, so uh, after looking at that, what I think I want to do is swap this out a little bit. I really like Bootsy Mance. I think he's going to be a heck of a player. I want to get him more playing time. You know, I understand this isn't uh, this isn't our year. At the end of the day, this is a year to make progression. This isn't necessarily a year for us to win everything that that we would like to win. So let's do this. Let's give him all the point guard minutes to start off. Let's give him. All of the shooting guard minutes to start off. And we'll let Kincaid be the rotational guy. So he's going to come in here. There. And here. And we'll let Randall run point guard part-time. And let's see if we see any significant differences. Let's see if we have any significant shifts in those stats. Because obviously, you know, we're down. We're only going to have a month of this, right? We're already 21 games into the season. Bootsy's really only going to have eight, nine games to get used to this. And changing that out right before we play Virginia, I don't know if that was the right move. Um, but we can certainly see if it was the wrong move. You know, this is a – this is going to – throw him directly into the fire right uh, so why not you know, why not take a chance like I said this isn't our year 
It's a year for growth. It's a year to push forward. Even if we don't get the exact same finish, I still think we're a Sweet 16 squad. I think we can do it. Fingers crossed. Let's hope I didn't just screw everything up. I probably just screwed everything up. No! Oh! Yes, sir! 94 to 86! That's what I'm talking about. Let's take a quick look at that box score. See, see what Bootsy did. See what Randall did. Maybe, you know, maybe dropping a... Maybe dropping Randall. Look at Bootsy! Plus 12! Yes, sir! That's what I mean. Played 32 minutes and he had six turnovers. Four assists. But he's plus 12. I mean, uh, the plus minus don't lie. Right? He's facilitating... All right. Hey, we got the win. That's end of the day. Randall's still a minus three. Kincaid actually a plus nine off the bench. We got to keep an eye on that. Kincaid had the better uh, player efficiency rating, better player impact estimate even before we went into that. So maybe there's something missing. Maybe there's something I missed looking at Kincaid versus Randall preseason. Or maybe, you know, I know these guys develop throughout the year and it only updates those uh, those attribute grades ever so often. So it could just be that Kincaid's developed this year and Randall has not. We'll find out, though. Maybe we need to tinker one more time. Maybe still forcing Randall to play at the point guard is holding him back a little, though. That would make sense. You know, we push him out of position... You know, maybe he's just fine when he's in his position and playing out of position is, you know, hurting his overall, like, especially advanced stats and that sort of thing. You know, you ask somebody to do stuff they're not used to doing. But, I mean, he's, he's got a good ball handling, good passing, so shouldn't be that far out of the realm of what he's capable of. All right. Big win at home against Virginia. Now, let's see... If the young man can keep it going on the road against a ranked Georgia Tech squad, it looked like their net was down in the 40s, though. So, yeah, they're down 47 in the net. Doesn't mean much, though. Oh, look at Syracuse. Scaring Virginia at home. Uh, doesn't mean much, though. We're still on the road. We still run in a freshman point guard. This is still going to be difficult. This is still Georgia Tech's game to lose. But let's make them lose it, right? Let's make them lose it. Let's get up in the chat. Let's get excited. Let's, let's go steal one. We need to steal some of these. We need to steal some of these, baby. We need to steal some of these. 97 to 91. Look at them. They're rolling. They're stealing him on the road against top 25 teams. The Cardinals grab a big win against Georgia Tech. And now we head to Cameron. Duke, uh, of course Duke's 13-8, and eight, still ranked in the top 25. All right. 13-8. and eight. They're nearly 500. I mean, I guess I'm not that far above it, but come on, man. How's Duke doing this? We for real here? Who's voting on this? Our AP voters are Dickie V and Coach K, and that's it. Maybe JJ read it. Come on, guys. Show them what we're talking about. This is the late season run we're pushing. We're pushing, baby. Get out of our way. Get out of our way. Get out of our way, Duke. You don't belong on our court. This is our court. I don't care what building we're in. That's If I go into your building and win by 23, that's my court now. Ha! See if you're ranked after that one. Suckers. 18-6, and 9-4 in conference. Ranked number 16. Whew. All right, we're moving and shaking. Now we get a we get what could be a trap game at home against Virginia Tech. You can't slip up here. Anytime you got a freshman running the point, you can slip up. We can't slip up here. 
Can't let it happen. Alright, the Hokies coming into the um. Going back out of the um, big time. Ooh. Oh, something stinks in here. Y'all smell that? Oh, it smells like Hokies. Oh, 102 to 57. Jesus. Oh, 45 points. Woo. Y'all stank. Get out. <laughs> 19 and 6, 10 and 4. We're moving. I do have to say, the young man's, he's making me look brilliant right now. Bootsy Mance, freshman point guard. Well, we 5-0 and since inserting him into the lineup, and a lot of those were tough games. All right, so now we got to go at Pitt, at Florida State, a team that beat us at home earlier in the season. So now we can see, is this for real, or is this just a weird little streak? A little glitch in the matrix, or are we on to something here with Bootsy? Oh, we should jump over and take a look at emails, see if we got any kind of Norton Ward stuff going on. I mean, not for us, but like just see who's uh, what teams in the country have some players on them. Ah, oh, Bowman is a semifinalist. Look at that. He's not going to win. I don't know how Hughes isn't on the list. He must not. Was he not on the list to start the season, probably? I must not have the original list. But yeah, Bowman's on the list. That's cool. I mean, he's not going to win it, but it's cool to be on the list. So you can see we got Arizona, Michigan State, Texas, Nova, Wake has a shooting guard in the top five. Okay. Kentucky with Chapman, yeah. He he killed us. That that clocks. Clemson, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Let's go ahead and blow those away. Good there. Alright, let's keep pushing through these uh these well, like I said, interesting stretch. February of our third year, and we are cooking, ladies and gentlemen. We're headed to Pitt, we're headed to Florida State, then Wake Forest at home. As these close down, we will take a look at the standings in the ACC and see where it looks like we're shaking out. <clears throat> All right, Pitt's 10 and 15, 170 in the net. Bootsy don't fail us now. I, I don't realize it's still Bowman and Hughes and Green that are making things happen, but uh, Bootsy's our good luck charm. And it's like the it's like the Monopoly piece, right? Like you always gotta be the shoe. That's our boy Bootsy. Let's go, baby. Cardinals and the Panthers. Fudge. All right, so we lost to an absolutely crap. Pittsburgh team on the road. Now, it was uh, on the road, but they're a really, really bad team. That's not a good loss to have on the resume. That'll knock us down a little bit, but um, if we could turn it around and take care of Florida State, steal that one, I'd take that trade off, I suppose. Because they're still really, just because they're not ranked, they're still really good in the net. So you just hope that the pit game was an anomaly. And if it wasn't, we go to Florida State and lose, then we got a couple of home games to get ourselves right. Sitting at 10 and 5 in the ACC, so five games to roll at Florida State. Let's see if we can uh let's see if we can steal one here. No, not quite. Well, six point loss. Tremaine Jenkins off the bench had a big game. Uh, we played them well on the road. But, could have been better. Alright, we should have four ACC games left. These three at home look delicious. Oh, Gonzaga eating it at St. Clara again. Gonzaga's 15-11. and 11. That's not a good look for the Zags.
Let's take that look at the ACC real quick. All right, so we're right in there fighting for the three or four, I guess. I mean, we're still in contention for the league, I suppose. Everybody's 16. We're just one game back, and we got a nice little stretch here. See, that pit loss hurt. But we got Wake. We got North Carolina. Who else we got coming up? Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech game will be a big one at home. All right, let's see how it goes. Everything we wanted at the beginning of the year still on the table. Top 10 finish still on the table. Sweet 16 very much still on the table. And uh, ACC championship, regular season championship, very much up for grabs. We got four games. Two games, don't slip up. And then play your balls off against Georgia Tech and see what happens. Let these other teams beat up on each other. We're just going to stay, you know, keep our heads low, keep our head down, keep our eye on the prize. What other will saying should I, what other saying should I throw out there? They're 13 and 13. Uh, just go win. Make it happen. You can't lose these games. Cannot lose these. Bad teams at home. Got to take care of business. Even in conference. Got to. Got to. Isaac Green, Bootsy Mance, there he is. He's popping up with the 13 and 10. Our boys first double double, the true freshman. Running the show. Running the show since the middle of January, I'd say. All right, and so there is our, our last conference game, right? So North Carolina at home, take care of business. Georgia Tech at home, huge season defining game at Wake Forest. So don't slip up, make it happen. Make it happen. I think Wake Forest is maybe decent. Were they middle of the conference or were they lower on the conference ratings uh, standings? Rather, Tar Heels were not very high. We should win this game at home. We barely won that game at home, but wins a win. Frazier Bowman, twenty and fourteen. He said, "Not today, Tar Heels." This is still our court. Not today. We're not slipping today. Won't let it happen. 12-6. and six. Let's finish this off. Two more wins. We'll win the regular season. We'll go into the tournament, rank number one. Uh, we'll go into the ACC tournament with the one seed, rather. This Georgia Tech game's huge, and we get it at home from the friendly confines of the Yum Center in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. Got the ESPN cameras coming in. Game day's coming in. I got the Louisville sign where it's pronounced six different ways. They, they show the picture of the Louisville Slugger bat. It's always the same thing. ESPN Productions, They if there's one thing they do not do, they do not recreate the wheel. They show the Louisville sign. They show the bat. They flip an image of the 4th Street Live. And then they get down to business in the Yum Center. Make it happen. It hadn't happened in a few years. But I'm telling you, next time game day comes to Louisville, next time the Louisville Cardinals are on top, that's what you're going to get presentation-wise, guaranteed. It's been that way for 30 years now. All right, Yellow Jackets, where are you at? I see you. I see you coming up on 3-1. Where are we at? Are we on 3-1 yet? It's 3-1. Louisville Cardinals, Georgia Tech time. No, <laughs> no, Brian, I was messing around. I meant um, I was comparing it to in, in real life. Like in real life, if there's a game like this in Louisville, that's the presentation ESPN's rolling with, right? No, the, the, game, doesn't, the game doesn't even have licenses for these teams. All of the team names and logos and all that are mods. Uh, they definitely don't have any kind of license or agreement with ESPN. So, no, that's just me making stuff up. <laughs> that's what happens if this game, this situation happens in real life. The ESPN crews rolling to downtown Louisville, that's what they're going to give you. But in this game, you roll into Louisville, this is what we're going to give you. 
Big game cards. Big game cards. Woo! 17. Big game Frazier Bowman. 15 and 19, baby. He said 15 and 19. Not today, Georgia Tech. Not today. 13 and 6. I'm not even going to go look at the standings. <laughs> Brown says he imagines imagines ESPN showing up. Yeah. I like to do it too, obviously. Uh, so I'm not even looking at the standings. I have faith. The rest of the ACC has torn each other to pieces. If we win this game, we got it. I'm just going to go in with blind faith. If we win this game, we've earned it. We take it. If we lose this game, we didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. The end. Win this game, take home a trophy. Win this game, take home a trophy. Cardinals and the Demon Deacons. We got to go on the road and prove it at the end of the ACC season. Win it and you earned it. Lose it, never deserved it. Win it and you earned it, baby. We got this. Bowman with another double double. Hughes with another double double. The big men don't want to let it go. Take a look at the standings. How's it play out? Ah! Mm. The Louisville Cardinals. In year three, against the ACC that was just absolutely brutal for most of the year, coming out on top with a huge win, huge four-game win streak at the end. And if you went back and looked at our record from the time that we put in, that we inserted Bootsy Mance into the lineup, uh, I'm relatively sure it's something like seven, eight, and two, like seven and two, eight and two, somewhere in that range. I know we lost two games, maybe three. But that worked out for us. So, I usually don't like to tinker too much. But, um, you know, as I kept on saying, you know, some of the stuff that was going on throughout that season didn't quite feel right. And it certainly feels like it's headed in the right direction now. So you can see where we're at, number 14. Uh, we're going to go into the conference tournament here on neutral courts. Hopefully it works out for us. Hopefully another little Sweet 16 run. Uh, and hopefully... You know, a season very similar to last year. And this is one of those things where, like, we went like this, and now we're we're right about here, and then it's going to go just like that. So this, this is the last season before it goes. This was the last big climb of the season. We had some real good games this year. We had had some good drama, had some bad losses. Certainly Colorado State. A couple of games against, against Florida State. Um, real bad loss to some of the dregs of the conference. Uh, but, you know, here we are at the end of the year. The ship is headed in the right direction. And I'm pretty pleased. You know, from beginning of the season to end of the season, if you told me this is what the record was going to be, this is what our ranking was going to be, this is what our net was going to be, we're going to win the ACC, I would have believed all that, and I would have took it. I wouldn't ask for more. Um, I don't know that I would have expected less. Record-wise, we're about where I expected to be. Uh, top 25-wise, we're about where I expected it to be. I'm surprised no ACC teams at least tied us, if not beat us. But, you know, it was a season where there were a lot of teams that were very similar. Uh, you know, the, the team's ability was very close. And so, yeah, we just beat up on each other. And we managed to pull it out in the end. And you can see here how much we beat up on each other. We're going into the third day of the tournament. And there's only two ranked teams still in it. All right, Boston College on a neutral court. Now, we take care of some... Well, let's, let's not even worry about it. Boston College on a neutral court. One day at a time. One day at a time. 26 points there. Darius Randall. Looks like Darius Randall put on a show for us. So sliding him back over into that two spot really did it. So now, does Georgia Tech take an opportunity? They have an opportunity for some revenge. We got a, a season-defining game against Georgia Tech from the Yum Center. Now we've got to go do it, and I don't know where we uh, play these fantasy ACC games at, but if I know anything about the ACC, it's probably being played uh, in the parking lot next to Cameron Indoor or somewhere right smack in the middle of North Carolina and Duke 
Although Duke ate it against Virginia. So uh, Louisville and Georgia Tech from somewhere in North Carolina. Bootsy Mansell with a 20-point game. The freshman is rewarding our belief in him. Adam Hughes with another double-double. 12-15 and 15 for the big man. And we go to the ACC championship game. The number 11 Louisville Cardinals. The number 8 Virginia Hoos. Cavaliers. The Hoos is what the, the nickname, right? The Virginia Cavaliers. Streamer beverage engaged. Let's see what we got. Let's make sure to simulate anything else. Cavs in the cards. And here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Cavs in the cards. Ah, 18 points. 18 points. That's it. Bring the hardware. Bring the banners. Regular season. Postseason. Louisville Cardinals. Woo, L's up, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Year three. That's what we're doing. Year three. Yo, I said we're still on this part of the slope. We haven't hit this part of the slope yet. We're still on this part of the slope. We're still getting there. We're putting it on them. Just wait for it, baby. Spacer99, thanks for the follow, buddy. Really appreciate it. Really cool to see that. All right, so selection show, where do we belong? Uh, regular season and ACC champs, we do have some bad losses, eight losses on the year. I mean, it just feels like a three seed, right? It feels like a three seed. If we're lucky, a two. If we get screwed, a four. But it feels like a three seed to me. All right, let's watch. Let's see if they hosed us or if they uh, give us our due. You can't win the ACC regular and postseason and be in the top 12 and not get a top three seed, can you? I'm the turn the the committee could do anything. I've seen it. I saw a number four in the nation Louisville team get a number four seed at one point in time, a long time ago. All right, Kansas, the number one overall seed. Tennessee, a two. IU's a three. Now, we beat IU, right? That was a home game, but we beat IU, so that's a real good quality win. Didn't realize it at the time. Duke, a seven. Georgia Tech, an eight. Oh, Duke's still getting the love, even in a fake game. You can't make this up, man. Duke always gets the love. I wonder how they program that in there. Arizona. UK a two. Auburn a three. Wichita State a four. The Billikens, another team that we beat. Florida State a nine. Now, they got us twice. That's not great. UCLA a one. San Diego State a two. So, that's three of the two seeds gone. We might be looking at a three. That's three of the three seeds gone. All right, we're in the last bracket. There's no way we're a five or lower, or else I'm sending Gary hate mail. All right, into the Oakland bracket. This is absolutely the bracket that we'll be in unless I just skipped past Louisville somehow. Michigan State is the one. Louisville is the two, baby. Mm. We had some quality wins throughout that year. couple of bad losses. If it weren't for those bad losses, I would have felt a lot better about it. But we grabbed the two seed. And we got Virginia. We get rewarded with Virginia as our three. So Virginia wants a third crack at us if they can get to us. Texas, Illinois, Alabama, Miami, and Notre Dame. So even if we just get to the second round, we're already having to fight back through the same ACC we just fought through. Not our best draw. But I'll take the two seed. I will. I'll take the two. We're rolling. We're healthy. I like this lineup. Let's go. I'm not tinkering at this point. We won too many games down the stretch to mess with what's going on. Too many wins. Oh, it's tournament time, baby. 
even in a simulated game, I can feel that tournament time coming. You know, you set up your TV, you got four games going at once, get the multi-screen up, non-stop, just flipping back and forth, this buzzer beater, that end of game situation. Who's it's the best time of year for college basketball. It's the best time of year for sports, to be quite honest. I can't think of a better tournament. There's Maybe there's better individual games, but for a tournament as a whole, absolutely nothing compares. The North Florida Osprey. Ospreys. This says Osprey. That says Ospreys. Does it have an S or not? I'm looking at you. Uh, gotta, who makes this? Who makes them odd? Somebody send them a message. I'll hit them on uh, Slack. North Florida versus Louisville. Whew. You always got to get past the Agalia stage. All right, we got past the 15 seed. They're not quite as tough as the 16 seed, obviously. But, uh, you know, you still don't want to lose there. That's still embarrassing. Hey, Beertown, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Glad to see you in here. Hope you're enjoying the stream. If you didn't get the whole thing, we can always catch up on YouTube. We'll have the rest of the whole thing. All of it will be up on YouTube sooner or later. All right, Miami again. Miami again. Now, I believe they got us in Miami. And I think they got us in Louisville, right? So it's way past time for revenge. Way past time for revenge. The Hurricanes and the Cardinals, second round matchup. They're looking to put us out. End our season here in the round of 32. Louisville looking to make it back-to-back Sweet 16s. Back to back Sweet 16s. That's what I'm talking about. Go back to Miami. You're not welcome on my court. Get out. Hurricanes, piss off. Directly back to Miami. Ooh. Yeah, catch up. But this is it. I mean, you can catch up through all the regular season meaningless games, but this is where it's coming down to it, baby. We're in the top 10. We're in the Sweet 16. We just put it on Miami. Miami gave us trouble all year. Mid-January, we made a little rotational change, brought a freshman into the lineup, a little bit of a more natural point guard, and it's paying dividends so far. So, revenge against the Hurricanes. Now, in the Sweet 16, we come up against the sixth seed. So, they must have knocked off a four, right? Would it be two four here? No. Two three, it would be two three here. So one seed would get the four seed. So Alabama has knocked off whoever the three was. The roster we're gonna get all. We'll jump all over the roster. If you hang out about ten minutes, we're gonna get through this tournament, and then we're gonna see what the roster looks like next year. We're not gonna spend too much time on this one. We're only losing one senior, and he's actually no longer starting. <coughs> Michigan State going strong. I believe that was the one state in our region. So, if we can get past the Crimson Tide, we're on a collision course with the one seed in our region. If we can't, we've fallen for the second year in a row in the round of 16. I feel better this year, though. I really do. Alabama and Louisville. Cardinals, Crimson Tide. Whopped them. 14. We're feeling good. Isaac Green's feeling good. We're moving on. Arizona goes down. Arizona loses to Stanford. The one seed. Dropping the game to the Stanford Cardinal. Might be the year of the Cardinal. I don't know what to say. It might be our year. Here we go to the Elite Eight. Now. Here's where reality has to set in. We're playing a one seed. We were a three seed that just barely slid into the two line. We've played well since our change at the point. Michigan State's still a better team than we are. So we've got to hope against hope because we're on a neutral court. we got to hope against hope. Uh, we got to hope for big games. we got to cross our fingers, cross our toes, 
If you have other appendages that you can cross for me right now, please cross them. Uh, I don't have any hairs that I can cross, but if I did, I would cross them. Uh, we need your help here. We need your help. We get to the Final Four, anything in the world could happen. The Cardinals and the Spartans. For the right to go to the Final Four, Louisville versus Michigan State. Ah, 84 to 70. Wasn't even close, Michigan State. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing, Michigan State? <laughs> oh, that hurts. Woo. Mm. Let's go, baby. Final four. Final four, year three. That's what I'm talking about. Making that run. Uh, hitting our stride at the right time. Ooh, let's go. Making it happen. Making it happen. Huge W. That's right, Beer Town. Huge W. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Moving into the final four weekend. Here comes Saturday. Dale, yeah, <laughs> I like it. Lurk away, baby, lurk away. Now we got another one seed. Hold on, hold on. Before, before we move on, I need to take a quick look through this tournament just to see how everything broke down. See who's left. We know what our region did. Oh, look at Indiana. Oh, all right. So take a look here in Washington. So Georgia Tech upsets Kansas. Gets to play Iowa. Iowa gets out here. Tennessee lost to Duke, and then Duke couldn't get past IU, so IU gets to the Final Four. Kansas City, this looks like the biggest upset. And, of course, that was Stanford over Arizona. So that was a 7 over a 1. Ah! <laughs> this might be my dream tournament. Oh, the stars might be aligning. Look at how the 15 seed got out. I don't even want to say their name. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna jinx this broadcast by saying their name. But Niagara beat some team of losers, and then Stanford got past Niagara, and then Stanford with the dream run completes it over Arizona. In New Orleans, that's fairly chalk. Georgetown got past San Diego State, and then of course in Oakland, one four two six. Oh, so Virginia, the three, did classic Virginia stuff in March. Lost in the first round. All right, the final four. Now, if we get past this game, we either play an IU team we've already beaten or the seven seed. But UCLA might be the best team in the country. So, it's not looking good. Anything you had crossed just a minute ago, uh, cross that again for me. Going to need all of the best wishes here. And I think Stanford is in. They are. 85-73. to 73. Stanford on a Cinderella run for the ages. Shades of Kimball Walker. Can we be there when the clock strikes 12 on Cinderella? Or will the UCLA Bruins march on with their 35-3 and record? Absolute titans of the sport back at its pinnacle here in the Final Four, taking on the Louisville Cardinals. It's the Bruins. It's the Cardinals. It's college basketball. Let's go. 94-80, to 80, baby. We're on fire. You can't stop us. You can't stop us. Isaac Green, Bootsy Mance. Oh, my word. So, now, wow, we have an absolutely incredible matchup. A Louisville squad that probably should have been a three has just knocked off back-to-back -back one seeds. Stanford knocked out Arizona and then took out the three-seed IU. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we started off the year talking about top 10, sweet 16, and 
here we are on the last day of the season. The Cardinal and the Cardinals. I don't know what to say. We're here. Good vibes. Uh, they are on a run. Stanford's on a streak. Uh, we're also on a pretty good run since mid-January. We've been playing very well. So, you no, know, let's see what it is. You know, did we figure out the right formula? Uh, is it just going to be Stanford too hot to handle? <sighs> Louisville and Stanford. The trees and the birds. The cards and the cardinal. One shining moment. Who is it? Ah! Ooh! Let's go! Let's go! 86-81! We are the champions, my friend. Bam, bam. Oh, my word, in year three. Let's savor this. I don't know if I can go on to recruiting. Oh, I think I might have. We won that, and Hughes only played 22 minutes. Hughes was in foul trouble. Bowman with 21 and 12. Absolutely playing like a Norton Award winner. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure he didn't win the award, but I'm also sure he should have. Bootsy Man still plagued by turnovers. Didn't have a great game here. But look, it, it allowed Randall to play on that off guard. Randall drops 18. Has a heck of a game. This is a far cry from what? He went 0 for 9, 0 for 6 from 3 against Kentucky. So you put a score like that in the right position. You know, even if you don't get as much productivity from this spot, you get it over here on the on the flip, right? Then you still get him run a point a little bit, get Kincaid his time. Harmon doing things, Jenkins doing things, and the Louisville Cardinals. What a run from mid January to the end of that season. What a run. I'd say our prestige is about to go up. I might be wrong. Let's see. Let's see how these awards go. <clears throat> Actually, don't expect to be in the running for anything, but maybe national coach of the year. Everything else would be like more ACC stuff. Entire association. We didn't get coach of the year. They gave it to Arizona. Uh, this loser got upset in the Elite Eight. And he had the freshman of the year and the defensive player of the year and the player of the year. We got the most outstanding player only because this loser didn't make it to the final four. You didn't make it to skip you the final four. So Jimmy drew apparently a heck of a player, but you know, those, those star freshmen really can't get you all the way there. Uh, if they don't have the right pieces around them, they don't have the right strategy in, around them. So Frazier Bowman picking up the NCAA MOP, basically MVP of the final four. Let's take a look at it. Well, we can look at all American awards. I don't expect to be in here at all. We're not. Uh, individual awards in the ACC. So we did get Coach of the Year here. That's cool. First team all conference, Bowman and Hughes. That clocks. Do we have Green here? Oh, we do not. So Isaac Green didn't make it, but Bowman and Hughes, they got their recognition. So I appreciate that. See what happens with our assistants. Woo. Got to calm down. My goodness. Uh, succeeded, succeeded. Great job, succeeded. 57 to 68. I mildly disagree with this. My guess is that's probably the maximum jump you can have in a year because Louisville's natural prestige is 10-ish 10, 10 points higher than that. 
<clears throat> so there might be a cap on yearly prestige increases. So I wouldn't have been surprised if that was bigger, but my guess is that's really close to a cap, if not the cap. I mean, what else could I have done that year other than go undefeated or something? Uh, let's take a look at the job hiring. We'll push on through this. We're going to get into next season for sure. <laughs> we go coach. Apparently Michigan State fired their coach after we beat them, or else Izzo just retired more likely. But I like to imagine that we put him uh, out of work. Man, it feels good coming off a shit, coming off a chip. Sure, it feels good coming off a ship also, but more like that has a different connotation. Let's delete all that. Take a look at the staff real quick. See if anybody's already left because of contract. Yeah. So we have a recruiter, and we need to backfill these other two spots. Great. I don't want to have to do math again. We just need to keep the spending low. <clears throat> All right, somebody that's willing to do player development that's relatively decent at it, along with some offense and defense, like Kenny Johnson. Uh, he's their first assistant. On 77 a year. No thanks. Seventy six a year. I'm really not looking to spend that much. McNamara? Yeah, McNamara's unemployed. Here we go, Jerry. Uh you can be my second assistant for sixty thousand a year. All right, we'll get through the coaches relatively quick. So I know nobody wants to see the coaches. We all want to see the roster next year. We all want to see uh, what the recruiting, what the transfers look like, all that good stuff. Did we land either of these guys? We didn't. Did they take other jobs? Yeah, assistant number one. All right, yeah. Didn't get either of those. Let's try, try again. We we'll just take one of these guys with really good development, but not great offense and defense. It's like it seems like most of them are taken up, or they're paying them relatively high. Maybe come in with a guy like this. No, let's let's go up here, and let's stick with that sixty thousand range. Nope, that's for a third assistant. All right, so I screwed that up. We got to go back here. Fix that offer. There we go. Right here, it'll tell you your current offers. Hey, Blazer Taz, what's up, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. I just won a championship, baby. Third year, coming out of, coming out of like 48 prestige. Just won a championship in year three. So we got our third assistant. We lost Norris. He went to be NC State's number one assistant. So yeah, ch nice little championship feeling coming out of coming out of Cardsville over here. Tweak Brown will give you fifty eight, uh, fifty five, four years. Didn't get him either, did we? He went to Santa Clara. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. We're gonna end up having to pay somebody. Really don't want to do that. Al Pinkins is on 53, second assistant. 
How about you come be my second assistant for 60? Better job title, better salary, better coaching staff. Finish in advance. Let's go. We're moving. Now, hopefully we still got the salary because I did not do any math before that. I was just trying to lowball really bad. <clears throat> but 142, the entire budget. So we'll have about 160 left for recruiting. Probably what, like 110, I'll have to, 120, maybe I'll have to go to facilities. That should be in the ballpark. We're still going to ask for more money here. Piss off, Matt Grady. Yeah, increase the budget, please. So, Blazer Taz, how you been doing, buddy? What are you up to? Any good, uh, any good saves going? Request denied. Shockingly, after we won the championship with our old budget, they didn't think we needed more money. I don't know how that works. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, let's end the season. Let's see how this goes. Let's do the little uh, back scratch of champions. Can't imagine anybody ever won a championship and didn't get a good back rubbing at the end of the day. Woo! That's what I need during the welding screen. All right. I don't know where you go from there. That was absolute, like, I don't want to call it a Cinderella run. It was a two-seed run. But that was a team that in mid-January, we were just on the outskirts of the top 25. And, you know, we made a change. And I don't know if that change made a huge difference or if the team just gelled at the right time. But knocked off two number one seeds on the way to uh, hanging a banner. So it felt good. It felt real good. Well, I can't wait to see what this team looks like next year. Because it's going to get sick. You all know how I do. All right, so we're in the top 25 for recruiting, but of course that was a two-man class. Now we got to go to budgeting. So let's see what this looks like. So they want us to spend 130 on facilities, leaving only 28 for recruiting. So I obviously should have done the math. Should have should have offered somebody less. I don't know who it was. Ooh, starting at Portland State. That'd be fun. Uh, we m might be able to pull this off. Expected to spend one twenty five. Let's drop it down to that exactly. So, oh, what do we want to take down? Take training by two. Amenities by three. All right, so that puts us right at 125. Hopefully that keeps us happy. We can still get our travel in. The budget will still be extremely tight. <clears throat> Ideally, we won't be uh, recruiting, like, you know, four, five, and six-guy classes. Hopefully it'll be two- and three-guy classes with maybe a few transfers mixed in. Uh, I definitely like to keep amenities well ahead of training and wellness. I don't want to drop it down too far though, because think about how many guys we come we have coming back that, that training is going to affect. I mean, I think Kincaid is the only guy that played serious minutes that's not coming back. Uh, aside from anybody that happens to transfer out. Uh, so, Mance, Randall, there's Derek Fall showing up. Kendrick still here for now. Green here. There's Oliver, Jenkins, Bowman, Hughes. I mean, this is a better team than we had last year, right? Fall is better than uh, Seymour. No, not Seymour. Who was the other guard? Kincaid. Fall is better than Kincaid, period. Uh, Martin Oliver is better than the whichever Humphreys guy was here. This is a better team, period. We still got all of our significant contributors. 
with the lone exception of Kendrick, but we've got Derek Fall to replace him. So, and Martin Oliver, and the development of Ed Branch, and the development of Abdul Abdul Kendrick. Yeah, this this team's just better. <clears throat> of course, that doesn't mean you know it doesn't mean repeat. It doesn't mean anything. Last team, last year's team was pretty special. It's a real special run there. Nick Cunningham, Martin Smith, both unhappy with the coach. See y'all later. What would we want to bring in, ideally? I'm perfectly happy with what Bootsy did. Obviously, how could you not be? He's a heck of a score. He's got the passing and handling up. The defense is good enough. Wish he'd, wish he'd develop a player type. I mean, if there's a stud point guard that wants to come in, I'm not going to tell him no, obviously. Derek Falls a heck of a heck of a player. Randall's good. That'll be a tough decision next year. Martin Oliver, solid as it gets. Jenkins developing. Real tough decision there. And we're we got a problem on the inside. This is too much talent on the inside. We got four guys, and Tremaine Jenkins at three and a half stars is the worst one of them. So that's a real problem. We're going to play all four of them this year and hope for the best. Oh, thankfully Bowman's a senior. So if we have to screw anybody, it'll kind of be him, but he's the best of them. So we really wouldn't be well served to do that. I love having the awards up here now. All right, so that's the team as it stands. Let's see. Uh, Transfer-wise, if we could get anybody. Actually, Ed Branch, I'm kind of happy with as a backup small forward. I don't know that I really want anything out of this transfer portal, but we'll see if anything falls into our lap. How about that? I've only got two scholarships available. All right, so a whole lot of interest out of this guy. I don't know anything about him. <clears throat> so a couple of guys that we think are A's, both at the small forward spot, actually. Real good score here in Nick Brown. Yeah, I don't know that either of those guys do too much for me. They're both good players. Uh, I just don't feel like I need them right now. You know, we're not we're not seriously lacking anything. We're we're lacking depth at point guard. But when when Bootsy has to go out, Randall can slide down, and Derek Fall and Kendrick even can take the place at the two. So uh, we're just really not missing anything significant at this point. And even Evans can be a – this is a good enough backup. I mean, fours are not ideal. I'd rather have fives, but he can shoot. He can play 10 minutes a game, especially once he knows the proficiencies. We're not really lacking there. Uh, let's go and see if we can just skip these sessions. <clears throat> so I'm trying to decide where I want to recruit. It's it's so hard trying to guess like who will stay and who will go, right? Because I mean, obviously we have to start Mance, Randall, Green. I think we still have to start Bowman and Hughes. Which creates a problem. Because it probably pushes Tremaine Jenkins out of the lineup. We have to push Oliver in. Uh, like, I have to play Oliver. Hmm. <clears throat> 
I don't know, I, I think it I think this is one of those seasons where you take the two best guys available and make sure that one of them's a perimeter player, one of them's an inside player and you just have some faith that, you know, everything breaks for you. And if it doesn't break for you, then well, let's let's take oh, look at these re-rates. Look at Derek Fall on the re-rate. 8 and 5. Uh he might push his way into the starting lineup. Five and seven. Ooh, I don't know. Randall's got the D. That's tough. We're going to have to think about that before we get into the next sim. Can you, can you bench Adam Hughes and bring in Martin Oliver? I don't think you can. I think you got to go Bowman and Hughes with Oliver behind them. Green with Branch. Oh, look at Ed Branch with the re-rate. Seven and six, baby. Oh, he's going to be pushing Isaac Green. He's pushing him. He might have pushed past him. He's pushing him. He might have pushed past him. So, yeah, any way you slice it, this is a better team. Uh, so, yeah, I really just think, like like I said, you've got to take some a perimeter player and an inside player, one of each, and hope for the best. Uh, you know, I'm going to – can I – is there any way to slack off on this because I'm so short on budget? Uh, this will take me down to 24000 I might be able to work 24000 I mean, I kind of have to. Don't have a lot of choice here. We're going to be working on a shoestring budget. But again, like I said, we're only recruiting two players, right? And we don't have to be too picky. We can go out, see where the interest lies. See where the talent lies and, you know, kind of see if we can grab some low-hanging fruit. And after the re-rates with Derek Fall jumping up, Ed Branch jumping up, kind of solidifying that a little bit, but even only, you know, senior, junior. So we still need a young guy over here on this wing. Uh, our power forwards are all kinds of young. I'm really worried Jenkins might transfer out because he's not going to get a lot of playing time this year. But let's just jump out and take a look at what's uh, transferring the draft. We I don't think we really had. So Michigan State, Michigan State. Oh, it hurts to see all these Michigan State boys going at the top, doesn't it? When you know you got beat by us. Chapman right there from Kentucky. Eddie Schaefer from Kentucky. I uh, have serious doubts that our guard got drafted anywhere. He did not. That's unsurprising. Let's delete all this. Jump right into the recruiting, baby. It's June 26th, the happiest day of the year in Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2023. Happiest day of the year, June 26th. We get it going now here with our 68 team prestige. So now we should be cracking on every recruit in the Southeast region that's worth anything, and we should be drawing some national attention. Some. Not all. Good enough, though. We're doing our, We're going tens across the board, baby. All regions. Full recruit list. Give me every prospect you got. I'll take a look. Uh, Five-star point guard from Mississippi. Yeah, that's interesting to me. Five-star point guard from South Carolina. That also sounds good. I actually like that also, yeah. Three, four. All right, so now if we're going three-star guys, I want it to be in the southeast, and both of those are. All right, that's a good list. <clears throat> 
See, this is where I wish I had that extra like four or five thousand dollars in the budget, so that we could be going over to like Midwest or Atlantic East or something and, and picking up some more of these guys. Uh, so see, not nearly as much interest at shooting guard. Now that could be because we got a fantastic shooting guard that as a freshman. That's a JUCO. The rest of these are all going to be southeast, I bet. All right, so we've got, we could go one of two ways. We could try to gin up some interest, which we won't. We need, we really need point guard or small forward and one big man. We really don't, uh, we really don't need shooting guard. I'll let this slide for now. I'll come grab a couple of these three star guys just in case. Aren't you, yes, especially from Kentucky, like, yeah, that's cool. Uh huh. All right, that's fine. We grabbed seven of them. Small forward from the southeast, number one small forward in the country. Love to see it. Don't want no JUCO. And any three stars need to be from the southeast. Uh, okay. <clears throat> well, we're still getting some love from the power forwards, even with Oliver being in tow. Okay. I'm not complaining, even from the West Coast. Aaron Cape from the West Coast trying to jump on the bandwagon over here. I like it. Uh, and <laughs> then it drops like a rock. Nothing down lower. We're going to have to call it right there. Center-wise, well, we might be in trouble because we got such a deep front court. These very top guys are willing to come in and compete. They're saying, look, I got you. I can come in and beat these bums out. And everybody else is saying, nah, I'm good. I got more playing time. Promise somewhere else. All right, we're, we got a list of 41. First time in a long time I'm calling it at 41. Colin Watchless, all region, all position. Let's start bringing them on campus. Let's take a look how much we're spending, though. We got to be careful. Five fifty, five fifty, five fifty, fifteen hundred dollars. Easy come, easy go. Let's move. And for a big man and a and a wing player. We could even go point guard small forward. I wouldn't be opposed to that because we do have four big men. I mean, if one transfers out, we could always bring in a transfer. Whew! I like it hot, hot, hot. Oh, uh, look at the five stars. Jumping on board, baby. Uh, let's get through a couple of camps. Check out some camp data. So right now there's no recruiting going on. You can skip there twice. As long as it says summer camp in the top left, you can skip it. When it says recruiting, that's when you got to get your actions out. So let's make sure these guys didn't suck. He did not suck. He was fantastic. Not great from Utah. Uh, didn't stand out from Ohio. Nope. Get off my list. Didn't stand out from South Carolina. We can leave him around. We're still going to get camp data from Memphis on him. He didn't go. He didn't stand out. He's from the southeast. Top 25 from in-state and a small forward, Tim Phillips. That might be a name that sticks around for a while. Didn't stand out from South Dakota. Didn't stand out from Ohio. Didn't stand out from Alabama. Top 25. 750. That hurts a little bit, but we'll go for it. Now we can get through the rest. Uh, we can get through a couple more camps. We're going to have to do one more blind round. <clears throat> All three of those are hots, though. So in the guys that we're interested in, we're definitely developing interest. It's just a matter of where we fall on their list. And we got five scholarships. We only had two before. How about something for transfers? We can go across the board here, actually. 
try to bring in one of each on a tight, tight budget. We'll see what we can do. Decent at Indy. He's in region. Decent at Indy in region. Top 25 at Indy in region. Another $1,500 gone. It's nerve-wracking, you know. But if we could trim this down, like, once we get through these camps, through the southeast camp, you know, we can break it down pretty quick. This is a dead period, so you can go ahead and click here. You're not missing anything. Then it should be two more camps. Everybody's showing a pot. Which is a significant difference from when we were at the bottom of the totem pole trying to come up from 48 prestige. Now here we are in the big times and uh, the recruits understand that. Alright, so headed out west. Decent, not spectacular. Like I, I'm just not, I'm not messing with y'all. South Carolina didn't stand out. Decent, no. Tennessee, now he was top 10 at Memphis. So you can stick around, come on in for a visit. Didn't stand out at Memphis. You're gone. Top five at Memphis. We already brought in Tim Phillips. Hey, Tim Phillips looking like a heck of a prospect. Look at this. We're at the top of his list. We're looking for a small forward. We've got a small forward who is in the top 25 at Indy, who is in the top five at Memphis, who Louisville is the number one school on his list. I think this is this is our this is our replacement small forward, right? Like how can it not be? Like even, even if this isn't optimal, like I've got a little bit of realism at heart. Like if you're uh if you're the coach at, at the University of Louisville, and this dude is in your state, you bring him in. These are the guys that know what the rivalry means. These are the guys that know what the program means. Like preferably they're out of the city of Louisville, but if you can at least get them out of the state. Look at this. He likes playing time. I think we can give it. I think we can give it to him. I think we got him. We're even gonna scout him live. It only costs us seventy five dollars to scout him live. We're going for it. Tim Phillips. That's our man at the small forward. All right, moving on. Top twenty five at Indy. Top five at Memphis. Yes, please. We already hosted him, and oh, we did not get a hot out of Hankins. All right, that sucks. Didn't stand out. Decent, not spectacular. At the small forward, that's not cutting it this year, baby. All right, another another Kentucky kid, another small forward. Decent, top 10. Could be a backup option. Super cheap. So we'll jump on that because we're broke. Decent. Oh, and he's in the he's in the wrong region. Um no, at the power forward, no. And that was him, so we're on to Mike Rosser. Didn't stand out anywhere. Rashawn didn't stand out anywhere. Tyson Blunt. Won't kick you off the list yet. You're off the list. We'll host him. We're not scouting him, but we'll host him. And that's all of our uh, that's all of our hosting. So let's move on. See who we got hot now. Quite a few. I've also cut this list down quite a bit. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and clear the list out. Decent, decent. You can stay. Just trying to cut off people I don't want to waste money on. Like you. Anybody that did not stand out at Memphis, I do not want to waste money on. Kentucky guy, oh, decent. Like, you're not moving the program forward, though, so get out. Didn't stand out, get out. I, got, I need guys that can change the program. Three-star guys that don't stand out at camp do not change the program for me. Well, they, they might change it, but not in the way we're trying to change it. So, no thanks. 
No. Got a lot of bums on the list at the bottom. I mean, I guess that kind of tracks. Bring you in. Drop them. All right, John Britton didn't stand out of Indy or Memphis. Why are you on the list? We just missed you. I uh, see that now. Tyson Blunt, decent at Memphis. How much money do we have left? 17000 Well, We can still be bringing these guys in. Top 25 at Memphis, yeah. Anybody who's decent at Memphis, I'm not bringing in. Anybody who is decent at Indy or top 25 at Memphis, we'll bring them in for a look. I think we got the money to do that. We're on July 31st, so we got an entire month of recruiting to identify who we want to go after at each position. And it's probably time that we do take it down, position by position. We've got our small forward target. Uh, let's find who our point guard target is. Top 25 at Indy. That's, well, here's the problem. We're hot. We're not above Alabama. Alabama's already offered. So he's going to favor Alabama unless we could jump him. And I don't know of a way to jump him. So while that would be a good option, he's unavailable to us. Jamal Lewis, top 10 at Memphis, but his top school of Arkansas is already offered. And his top school of Mississippi is already offered. So we don't have a point guard option. None of these point guards are available to us. Now, what we can do is throw an offer out and cross our fingers that, like, for some reason he doesn't commit day one and go straight to Alabama. But I don't like our chances. All right, top 25 at Memphis. We got to try to host him because this other guy not interested in us. He already visited. He's already got the offer from Vandy. He's hot on them. He's cool on us. That's never happening. Small forward. Really like our. I really like our Tim Phillips chances here. That one feels good. All right, power forward. We'll see what we got. Top 10 at Indy. Oh, Florida offered right ahead of us. Let's see what else we got. Well, Arizona State's ahead of us. A couple schools ahead of us. All right, we're at the very top of his. He was top 25 at Memphis, at least. But he's a two-star guy. So he's probably ours if we go for him. He's going to be behind Oliver and Jenkins. If Jenkins transfers, this is a decent depth option. He's a Kentucky guy. We got the scholarships to give. I'll give it to him. I wouldn't have minded trying for him, especially if we don't have a center option. Well, we already don't have a point guard option. Let's just go for it. Like You don't get any bonus points for saving scholarships in reserve, right? So let's just go for it. We don't even know if we have a center option. Oh, we do. Top 10 at Indy. We're in his top three. No other offers. That's a done deal. Oh, we're his top. Oh, but he was decent, not spectacular. Yeah, we like the other guy better. But if somebody else offers him, if somebody else offers Brown, we're going Wormley. No hesitation. And we need to host him. All right, we're still at like 15,000. And we can kind of cook here through a few weeks and see if any of these offers change. Bouncing over to the emails just to delete all this crap. Oh, look. Hughes and Bowman both up for the Norton. Some Kentucky loser. UCLA, UCLA. So Bowman was in the top 20 last year. You drop him to 39th? Give me a break. Not buying it. Got hosed. All right.
still 15,000. Top five at Memphis. Oh, we're not on him because we already we already brought him in. Right. I was looking over here just through the cools, but I forgot what I meant to be looking for was the home visits. So nothing on Brian Dye. Yeah, we can bring him in. I mean, I think Phillips is our guy there, but that's the only guy that hasn't visited that's still on our list. And I don't think any of these are like, I don't think we can scout too much more at this point, like in person or whatever. All right, so just for, um, just so I can go back and watch this video after the fact and see if this actually works this way or not. Uh, it looks like Adrian Stewart will go to Florida, but we're right there as a spoiler candidate. So if he goes directly to Florida, might not be worth going after guys like this. Same thing with Wilkerson. Alabama's already offered. We expect him to go to Alabama, but we'd love it if he reconsidered. Uh, Tim Phillips, we're his top candidate. We've offered. We expect to get Tim. Jason Walcott, we're the only offer. We expect to get Jason. Who am I missing? Stuart, Wilkerson, Blake Brown. Uh, Blake Brown, we are the top offer on Blake Brown, and he was a top 10 at Indy, so we expect to get Blake. And that's really for my purposes, but if y'all want to use that and look at what's going on. Hey, Kim is chilling. Thanks for the follow. Really appreciate it. Uh, so that's what I expect to go with these guys. It looks like we're looking pretty good for three of them, and two of them we should probably lose. Now, it sucks that one of those two is the, the point guard. Uh, really, the only point, the three point guards, we weren't in contention for any of them traditionally speaking, from the way that this recruiting's been going as far as I've seen it. Uh, but Wilkerson, we were the closest. So let's see if we can, like, like, can you just walk in and cause a fight? Can you walk in and start something? Or is this predetermined and a waste of my time? We're about to find out. All right, two more weeks. You got to have in this year's version. You absolutely have to have all of your offers out by September fourth, uh, because the vast majority of the very best players are going to commit on the eleventh. Basically, any of the good players that's been offered, as best as I can tell. Uh, and of course, you know, in the positions where we're battling for people, uh, we didn't have any better options. So, here we go. One last check. We should have no scholarships available. We do not. We've offered. Oh, we're warm on this guy now. One last check to see if any changes. Oh, look at that. We moved ahead of Florida in this ranking in the last week. So I don't know if that is our recruiting coaches. I don't know if that's our budget on facilities. But we've moved ahead of Florida for Adrian Stewart. So that's very interesting to see that change. And so now we absolutely have to check through the rest of them. Alabama, we're still behind Alabama for Wilkerson. We're still in front for Blake Brown. Tim Phillips, we've fallen behind Connecticut and Michigan State, but neither of them have offered, so we're still basically in front for Tim Phillips. And we're still the only offer and the top offer for Jason Walcott. Okay, so my prediction is that we get everybody except for the one we needed the most. Uh, and let's see how that plays out. Well, let's go to email. I, I like to try to get off that screen. I don't want it to pop up and show all the cardinal heads or whatever and mess with it. Man, if we only get like one commit and my theory is completely blown, it's going to suck. Brown's coming to Louisville. Phillips is coming to Louisville. Stewart went to Florida. So it looked like we jumped him, and then either that was a mirage or they jumped us back. And Wilkerson's going to Alabama. So it played out basically like we said that it would, except for there's one out there, which is the center, small forward, point guard. What was Stewart? 
Uh, there's one of them out there that did not make a decision. Hey, it's still a pretty good recruiting class. I mean, Brown and Phillips are really, really solid. Oh, it was Walcott still has not made a decision. Let's text him and get his uh get a little bit of information on him, be able to make some visits. He likes location. Hey, we can pitch location, my man. Yeah, we got you on that. All right, point guard. Oh, Tyson Blunt did not make a decision. So this opens up the door. Mississippi was ahead, but now we can make a visit. We can make an offer, and we can make a visit. Now, he's not great. I mean, he's decent, not spectacular. Indy, same at Memphis. This isn't great, but we could use some depth at this position. Uh, so let's just visit and go location. Seems fair. Uh, let's see what else we got here. All right, we got Phillips at the power forward. We're going for wall cut. Michael Steele's still out here. Mm, that'd be a lot of ground to make up for a guy who's not fantastic. Small forward. I think Phillips is fantastic. Now we can look. MVP at Memphis. MVP at Indy. And is he, are we hot on him, Buddy Beasley? This is the best player in the country. Okay. So let's reevaluate. Um, the best player in the country decided not to commit in the first week. So I haven't seen that yet in this year's version of the game. But I do know how to deal with it. <laughs> You offer him a scholarship, you find what he's most interested in, and then you pitch it to him. And then you cross all of your appendages. So even if we can grab Phillips, we can find a way to make it work. And John Wright's really top 25 at Memphis. Ugh. No scholarships remain. We could at least visit him, throw out location. Generate some interest. Because we're probably not landing the top guy. But why not ask? Alright, let's see what happens there. Ooh, quite a lot of emails. Quite a lot of decisions. Buddy Beasley. Hopes to be on the court with me. Now, I get this email so many times. From guys that say that, and then it turns out they're on the court against me. So, hope to be on the court, hope to be on the court. Cool. We thought it went well. Tyson Blunt going to Nebraska. Okay, so that was the point guard. Walcott, the two-star power forward in state, coming to the Ville. Scheduling for the 2025 season. Looks like our games are created. Okay. Buddy Beasley, top recruit in the nation. Didn't see anything about it. We were locked into Tim Phillips. Um, he decided not to commit week one. He's still out there. We went to visit him, and he said he wants to be on the court with us. And then he broke our hearts and went to Clemson. What a jerk. God bless America. Buddy Beasley goes to Clemson. Mmm. Not cool, buddy. Two scholarships still available. And we can throw one out to we can throw one out to John Wright. I don't know. Yeah, let's get some depth. That's fine. Visit him, talk about location again. And then we already have a power forward. We already have a center. We do not have a point guard. And we don't have one available. So let's just save the other scholarship for a transfer. All right, let's see. Push through here, see if we can get one more commit. 
at Ohio State. I don't know if that's the best start. Uh, can we just flip the home and away? No. All right, let's do it. We'll take them. Ohio State's football state, football school. We got that. Only one scholarship available. That means this guy's decision is Louisville. All right, let's take a quick look at this recruiting class. We were unable to fill one scholarship. Hold on. What do we finish up with money-wise? We only we didn't spend much at all. About twelve or $13,000 to land this class. So that's not bad. I always wanted to have 30 or 35 in the past. And now we're landing classes like this with 12, 12 to 15. So Jason Walcott, top 25 at Memphis. This is a depth player. And he's an in-state guy from Paintsville. John Wright from Florida, three-star guard. Uh, he was also top 25 at Memphis. So again, not a program changer necessarily, but depth-wise, this is absolutely a guy you can probably rely on. Now, Tim Phillips is an important recruit. Um... Because we desperately needed some small forwards. Uh, we've got Green as a senior, and his backup as a junior. And now Tim Phillips, as a fresh, or you know, coming in as a freshman, is one of the top 25 players at the Indy Elite Camp. So that's a big-time dude. And he's from Kentucky. He's from in-state. And then we break out this five-star, seven-foot beast of a man, Blake Brown who was top 10 at Indy. We're bringing in one of the top 10 players in the country. Five-star, the first one in the top 25 since I've been at Louisville in this save. Like, this is our first potential one and done. And, I mean, given his talent, given his finish at the at the uh, elite camp, given his size, seven foot, 300 pounds, this is a one and one monster. He's a beast. Absolute game changer. And he's coming in to a front court full of game changers, full of guys that just took us to a national title. And he's going to run them off the court. So it's going to get serious here, guys. This is our class going into our fourth year. This is our starting roster going into our fourth year. It's a significant upgrade from last year's roster that just won the national championship and the ACC tournament championship and the ACC regular season and finished in the top 10, and we're just getting started. I'm out. Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2023. The Louisville Cardinals. Complete rebuild. Value Man Cards. I don't know. That's all I got for GM games. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, any complaints, send them to Chris. I had no part of it. I appreciate y'all. It was a great time. I had a fun stream. I hope y'all come back. I hope to see you again. L1C4. Get those L's up. National champs, baby.